where we come from, art has always been public, and life has always been public. Always felt that there, were, there needs to be more voices out there on the street. Is this this whole magical canvas of yours? Mm -hmm. um, but it's so beautiful, and there's so many elements. I mean. How does Thank your you. mind work? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I often say I've seen enough magic to know that it exists. And, uh, you know, very often when we talk about um, magical realism or, or even the idea of something being mystical or supernatural, it feels like it's otherworldly. It feels like it, it doesn't belong to the earth. But for me, it's actually quite the opposite, where I feel like um, a lot of my work is also deeply embedded in the earth. Um, and I feel like soil is magical because soil can turn bones into life you know uh, or I think like um, photosynthesis is magical to be able to turn light into life and into food um, so I a lot of in my own personal and intimate practice um, I draw a lot from that kind of earth magic uh, to recognize that even in other reality that we do inhabit is quite beautiful and uh, with my public practice which is the fearless work that I do um, there is still a kind of uh, tethering to magic in that sense because um, I, I think the ability that we have to heal, to transform, to um, alchemize is also incredibly magical and that's exactly what we do with communities of women in public spaces across uh, India and the world. When you talk about public spaces and, and you know all this amazing street art you've done, firstly, how difficult is it to get a place to to to, to do this whole installation or this artwork and you know uh, because I know we have tons of loopholes and tons of blue tape or red tape or whatever you call it. And uh, you, you've worked in various cities and I can see you're in Jaipur. And I mean, beauty, I think, is deeply strategic as well. It's not just aesthetic, it's also strategic because it means that one can do pretty political things um, and participate in shaping worlds and public life in a way, uh, but without necessarily standing against something as much as you're standing for something. And um, especially in spaces like India, um, you know, if where everything is in this constant state of decay on some level uh, participating in making something more beautiful um, people are, are already excited about it so we always work with individual permissions We came into both the uh, financial as well as the emotional backbone in our family and um, much like like lotus flowers and murky waters, you know, art really transformed us. Like it really became into our lifeline. Um, and so uh, I started off when I was 16 as a children's book illustrator. So I used to make these tiny little illustrations. Yeah. And then from there, I started to get really interested in technology um, and uh, went into doing interactive installations. There's an installation I made out at Burning Man, which was uh, one of the world's biggest biofeedback installations. Um, I had a series of new media uh, stories on the iPad called Koya, uh, which was then featured on TED. And so I was really engaging with art, interactivity, um, high art, technology, and using things that people were using, um, you know, in even in medical spaces. Well, that's great. And, and you've had, uh, I mean, now you've been working for a few years on this. Um, and I'm sure uh, the response would get better and better because they can see the impact your art is making in, in you know, in, in everybody's expression, thought, um, you know, feeling, um, mm -hmm. you know, just walking past, gazing. Uh, for me, I'll be standing there taking a hundred photos. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, for me, or, you know, personally, I find beauty even in the railing of that building behind you. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. So um, your art just adds a un unbelievable layer behind it. Um, and um, so, so you've been working on this now for how many years exactly uh, on the public art spaces? 
So I returned to the most basic technology I knew, which was my body, with a brush in my hand on the streets, um, and started to paint in public spaces with communities of women, with the queer communities, with the communities on the margin. Um, and it's been about eight years since. Incredible that you followed it through and you made up. It, you know, you've connected with, I think, different parts. You've, you've connected with somebody in Pakistan as well, and then you're here in India. And do you have um, any other connections internationally on this? Yeah, we've, uh, since we started in 2012, we've now grown into an organization um, and we're hoping to grow into a movement. Uh, so we've painted in around 12 countries across the world. I painted in South Africa and Indonesia and, and okay. Beirut and in Brazil. Um, and um, now we're really at a place where I'm starting to also teach the fearless methodology to other uh, young South Asian artists across South Asia. And uh -huh. so the intention is to really grow out into a movement of you know hundreds of women taking back public spaces, painting their bodies. Um, and for me, my practice and a lot of also my healing came from self-portraiture. When I was uh, young, I used to paint self-portraits and I found that every time I would paint a self-portrait, I would um, move from who I was told to be into who I wanted to be. You know, it was it was also an act of alchemy. And um, so with the communities that we work with on the street, it, it is about representing your own stories. It is about representing your own bodies. And it's an extremely inclusive, participative process. Our process is... Um, it's a, usually a week or 10 day long process. We uh, find a community uh, that we want to engage with and uh, we do very immersive, almost ritualistic uh, workshops with them uh, through which arrive, we arrive at what we want to represent on the streets. Um, so uh, with this particular one, we were uh, doing a national tour right after the pandemic um, kind of the lockdowns opened up because we found ourselves, you know, right before the lockdown, we. we Fearless was supposed to be in Kenya, we were going to be painting in Mexico City um, where, which is for me was like the pilgrimage to where mural making and yeah. Uh, and, really and, yeah. and we were supposed to be in Sri Lanka and you know we had this entire plan as, as so many people did and uh, the pandemic started, lockdowns began and we found ourselves in the biggest moment of fear that we've seen globally. Yeah. Um, so as soon as the lockdowns opened, we, we basically uh, started a national kind of rented this big jeep and <laughs> drove from Lucknow to Delhi and Delhi to Jaipur and painted with communities that had really been the most affected by this time. Um, and really the intention was to, you know, where as we're saying the new normal, the new normal, can the new normal be a more inclusive, more beautiful, more fearless uh, world? and uh, before before the world contracts again. So in this particular space in Jaipur, we were working around masculinity, particularly queer masculinities. Yeah. Um, and so we engaged with the um, queer community here in Jaipur and the mural itself, uh, what, what I like about a lot of these, these sort of public monuments is that people see themselves in it. You know, art makes us visible to each other. And even within the framework of uh, art that's socially relevant, it doesn't have to be prescriptive or didactic. Um, so I've seen a lot of straight boys, for example, like young Jaipur boys come and yeah. hang out in front of this mural and take selfies. Yeah. And it does, uh, you know, head to JB is as a head to JB is as a be Um So for a lot of the young straight boys here, it is you know a calling to permission. Like let yourself choose yourself, let yourself love. Um, and for the queer community, they see this as as a monument to their stories and their love as well. Um, so, with this particular mural, yeah, it's an image of two men holding each other on the streets and it says, Head to JB, Jazzat, Karla, Kuzi, Muhammad. So, a lot, all of our murals have a message um, embedded into them. They're usually uh, positive affirmations and they usually are um, kind of calling in that safe and sacred future that we want to live in rather than uh, standing against something. So it, it, we'll never have a mural that says, you know, no CA at RC or stop violence. Yeah, against women. Yeah. But instead, it is really about affirming what we do want. Yeah, but I love that. I love that it has to be a positive affirmation. I love that, um, you know, your entire, um, you know, everything starts with beauty with you. Um, and I love that, you know, you, you've, you also look at nature, um, you know, like you said, Earth. Um, that's something I, I enjoy myself a lot. 
right before the lockdown we were working at Shaheen Bagh and it's interesting because even though the protests you know um were were shut down even though the graffiti was painted over that mural still remains as a yeah. testament to those women and their stories um and next we're going to be working uh, again with essential workers in Bangalore followed by doing a project in Punjab with the, the women farmers who are involved in the protest so we have a very busy year up ahead despite the pandemic which is good but when i do work in public space it's a very different kind of approach uh, it's handing over your brush to everybody it's your body yeah. being you know i say it's visual art but it's also performance art because as i'm standing out here uh, with a brush in my hand 50 foot feet up in the air you know um, this is not a ordinary sight just like seeing lgbtq communities reciting their love poems on the street is not an ordinary sight just like seeing dalit women dancing and drinking uh, you know uh, like use and painting a mural on lodi colony is not an ordinary sight and so we really make space for that extraordinary and um really claim the space that we were never given in that sense duty is my mother tongue i was brought up by a single mother so every day was a reminder of how miraculous and magnificent women are unlock our ideas of of what we consider public art or street art like very often when we talk about street art the first thing that comes to mind is banksy you know or is yeah. graffiti but why why are the alfresco painters in rajasthan not included in that conversation why is the kollam on the streets in uh, tamil nadu not included in in that conversation and the truth is i think that in the world of our ancestors gallery spaces didn't exist there were no isolated exclusive spaces where art hung inside frames you know art was embedded into our language into our love letters into the dots of our language in our sacred fires in our funerals in our love making on our plates on our tongues like art and beauty was everywhere and everywhere. the western world um you know isolated itself stripped itself down became art became so minimal families became so nuclear individualism became kind of the king and galleries became more and more exclusive and then came street art and graffiti as this like you know angry radical movement to take back public spaces is acts of rebellion but uh, where we come from art has always been public and life has always been public and so if you step away from from urban india into spaces like rajasthan or tamil nadu you know you do find um, beautiful palaces with gold leaf uh, adorned on every wall but you also find chalk patterns outside people's homes um, oh, there is yeah. you know there's there's beauty embedded into everything in um, in india so that's also where we really try and locate ourselves as a movement is that we aren't placing ourselves in uh, into the the history of street art or public art from the western perspective but we're really trying to align ourselves and embed ourselves into our own history um, yeah when you when you did the this work behind you um, in jaipur um, did you have a, a bunch of people working with you on this in terms of a group of you guys when you're work do you work like that so uh, our work is always um, collective in the sense that uh, i'm the lead artist of the murals but uh, we encourage the community members themselves to actually yeah. pick up a paintbrush and paint with us and um you know they may have they have never picked up a paintbrush before in their lives but again we really want to encourage this capacity that everybody has to uh, participate in public life and also to create beauty so um through through you know working with us uh, at first doing like flat colors in the background and then adding like dots and what not in like eventually people realize that they can also participate yeah. so it's a very it's a, it's not a, a fully community or collective process it's a participative process which uh, somebody as young as you have uh, you know who understands so deeply and who is sort of imbibed it and work with it with her art and uh, and maybe of course uh, it could be a lot to do with where you come from and your mom and you know mm-hmm. what she was also working with but uh, that's uh, that's that's quite tremendous uh, because uh, personally uh, you know while i have been doing interior design to delve into uh, the hindu culture and to understand the antiques and to understand um uh, you know what i really like it's been an evolution and it's taken me so many years uh, mm-hmm. myself so at 32 uh i think wow uh completely wow on that uh, that's why you are who you are shyla <laughs> <laughs> thank you